Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So we have some XRP news to get through today. We have a little bit of XLM related news. Um, we have some Bitcoin news, some chain link news. And if we make it that far, we'll get to a little bit of BRICS Nations news at the end. So this first article here is titled XRP set for rapid rally target at five dollars. Um, now, this trader here, Jake Gagain, believes that XRP could hit five dollars. Um, this bull market, of course, who knows how long this bull market is going to be, could be could be a little longer than other bull markets, considering that now it's being led by institutions instead of retail and institutions and uh, big money individuals are hoping and expecting for Bitcoin to go extremely high. You know, of course, that's because they bought low, right? <laughs> they bought low and they want to see some astronomical gains, which retail showed them the way. Retail showed them how um, how much Bitcoin could really make. And they knew that if retail could do that, the institutions can do much more. I think that's just logical, right? And they have all the backing to do it. You see, um, I've seen more promotion of Bitcoin than I've ever seen before on major media. Whereas before when retail was running the bull market 2021, sure, there was a lot of bullish information on um, Bitcoin, but mainstream media was also, it was also littered with a lot of FUD on Bitcoin. And I remember being out there in public and speaking to people and they didn't even know I was in crypto at all. Like this is when the crypto bull market was going insane right there. And we were doing very well. I'll just keep it at that. It was doing real well. Um, and people would just start talking to me about Bitcoin, but it wasn't in a positive way. It was always very negative and, oh, how could you, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, could you believe people would get into this Bitcoin thing? It, it's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. Like that was I heard that so much. I'm just telling you my experiences. Yours could be completely different. I don't know where you live. I don't know your people. I'm just I'm telling you from my experience. That's how it was. That was controlled by the institutions who wanted to set up for the time period. Now, this all connects to XRP because it's one of the catalysts. It's not the only and it's not even the biggest, in my humble opinion, but it's one of the catalysts. This time around, um, the, so now that the institutions are in place, it wouldn't it be logical to spread a bunch of positive energy around Bitcoin because they want your money now. They want the people to get in. They definitely definitely want some of that cash pile on the side to come in that they, you know, they definitely want a lot of the um, generational wealth legacy, uh, not legacy, but older uh, audience to maybe liquidate some things, put it into Bitcoin to double and triple their value, uh, you know. They definitely want that. So wouldn't it make more sense now to put to spread a bunch of positivity all around stuff? And that's what I've been seeing through mainstream media sources. It's just this overwhelming positivity about Bitcoin and love for Bitcoin. You know, um, I'm just waiting to hear from people out there once the bull market really, really kicks in, because I firmly believe we're still at the beginning. Nice little healthy pullback, of course with people openly declaring I'm, I'm buying more of whatever you not it's not just bitcoin because a lot of stuff is can stand to go up again but people are openly saying like i bought some more low it's the, so that's that's beginning again I, I haven't heard that kind of talk since the last since 2021 bull run um anyway so if you're going to have that positive sentiment behind an already hot bitcoin that could possibly, of course, it's not a guarantee that could possibly bring in even more money because all of those doubters are now go. Oh, they're going to change their minds. People are like that. They're so easily influenced. It just it concerns me at time um, that how how influenced people are by by uh, I'll say mainstream It's really mainstream media really controls them. Minor media just doesn't. It's the mainstream media controls them, uh, the bulk of society. And when they say something's bad, it's bad. But when they start saying it's good, people start switching easy. So I think that a lot of that money that once was held from Bitcoin because of FUD, mainstream FUD, could now possibly be brought in. And that could be huge. I mean, of course, we have to wait and see. But I think that's just a logical um reasoning i think there's logical reasoning there so anyways if that happens sure a lot of things can go up not just xrp but five dollars sure could be possible you know i, I say let's get past two dollars three dollars first somebody else would say in the comment section let's get past one dollar first yeah and you'd be right sure let's get past one dollar first but i think that that definitely still 
it doesn't negate from that being a possibility. Five dollars. Yeah, sure. Um, and then, of course, that's one catalyst. And the other catalyst, obviously, is defeating the SEC on institutional use. And I will never let anybody downplay how important institutional use is. Number one, let's negate retail. If XRP was going to be pushed by retail and used by retail, then why hasn't it started? XRP had clarity since last year. It's just not going to happen. Retail does not care about XRP and cannot move XRP. XRP has as many coins as it has, what, 100 billion or whatever it is, who knows, because of it's supposed to be global, globally used and globally used by institutions. You heard Ripple say that it's um, you can look all of the look up everything that I say, question everything that I say, but question everything everybody else says as well. Look up everything. I question everything. I was raised to question everything. So anyway, um, you read the articles where some representative from Ripple let it be known that they would like XRP to be the bank's version of Bitcoin. Um, so that's that does, I'm not saying that so that because that's going to actually happen. Who knows? But what I'm saying is it shows you their intention for it to be used by banks and large institutions. Loosening up Nostro on demand liquidity. Who's that for? That's for institutions. So we have to get past this part of the court case that involves institutional use of XRP or however, however they want to phrase it so that the big institutions can step in so that the banks can step in so that XRP can use be used for the utility that it was it was built to the purpose that it was built to serve. I think that's just logical. Um, Ripple has a whole bunch of banks on standby. All right. They probably tested it out a little bit. Minuscule, minuscule use of it because you can't just like I said, we're in, involved in that court case on institutional use, institutional sales, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but so they're not using it in mass now, but later they can. Um, I always get people asking about to um, clarity on that. It's like, I'm, you know, if you had a channel long enough and we've been here three, three years now, since 2021 is when we came in. Let me make that clear. 2021. I get a lot of people saying, they, you know, the channel has been around longer than it actually has. It hasn't. When um, when I started releasing videos on the channels, 2021. All right. Right before that, the bull run, the, the 2021 bull run. But anyway. Um, so on demand liquidity, uh, loosening up no stro. Uh, B2B, you heard them talk a lot about, you know, business, business to business, cross border transactions, wholesale, wholesale CBDCs, you know, whether they're built on the XRPL directly using XRP or using XRP as a, uh, a bridge currency. All of that is institution. So we need to get there. Right. So that's another huge catalyst. That's why I went through all of that. That's another huge catalyst. Um, so. That could also. Uh, lead to uh, the skyrocketing of XRP's price. And then once we get past the ending of the case and um, we'll see, I don't expect things to happen overnight, although I would love for it for that to happen. Um, but we'll see how fast uh, the companies that are building on XRP R RPL and utilizing XRPL, how fast they can start deploying everything or using, using it. Um, I don't know how you want to phrase that, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, but we shall see. So $5. We'll see. So now let's move on here. We have a little bit of an XLM related news. And it is titled New York gives regulatory green light to blockchain focused asset manager. They're talking about none other than Wisdom Tree. It says Wisdom Tree's charter sets up a path for it to offer certain stable coins on public blockchains. Firms digital assets head tells Blockworks. Of course, Wisdom Tree Prime app is using what? Stellar. Um, and if they're, they believe in stellar enough to use it for their wisdom tree prime app, um, I don't think it's far fetched to say that wisdom tree could expand its use of stellar in a, a myriad of ways in the future. So this could be huge. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on things. I'm just playing with thoughts here, but there is a definite connection, right? Um, if they trust stellar also, why would not, why would stellar not be primary in their minds? But of course, companies can do whatever they want. But let's read this little tidbit here. It says Wisdom Tree has gained clearance to offer its quote blockchain enabled unquote financial app. Wait, is this not the Wisdom Tree Prime app? Bear with me one second. Let me just scroll up one more time. Stable coins. Okay, why didn't they say that in the title? They need to clarify, but let's keep reading. Financial app. The only app I know that they have is the Wisdom Tree Prime app, which is built on Stellar. It says to new to New York users via a charter expected to also extend extend its digital assets offerings more broadly. OK, so it's both. I see. 
but that's huge. Why not say that? And why not mention Stellar? I don't know why these, it says it's called blockworks.co. So this got to be a, this has to be a blockchain website. Why do, why do they always not want to mention XRP, Ripple and Stellar? Like it's sometimes they just cut them out. They'll be talking about something that directly correlates to them, but cut them out. It's something that I question. I see it often. It's like they don't want to give them any shine. None. Anyway, let's keep going. The New York State Department of Financial Services cleared the fund group managing $106 billion in assets to operate as a limited uh, purpose trust company under the state's banking law. Wisdom Tree said Friday, the charter allows the firm to custody digital assets as well as issue, exchange and manage the reserves of the DFS approved stable coins. The newly formed Wisdom Tree Digital Trust Company intends to issue its gold is gold is gold and dollar tokens. Wait a minute. And maintain reserves for those assets. Uh oh, wait a minute. Ooh, this might be a bigger article than I thought. Hey, man, you better click the like button for this. It says the company is also set to make its Wisdom Tree Prime app available to New York customers in the coming weeks. The firm said in a new release. Wait a minute. This article, it has so much in it, but it's so confusing. It says up here about an app. It says Wisdom Tree has gained clearance to offer its, quote, blockchain enabled financial app, but then it doesn't name it. So it gained clearance for its financial app. It says its financial app. So it's like they're alluding that they only have one app. Okay, the one app that I know about and that they even reference is the Wisdom Tree Prime app. So now is the Wisdom Tree Prime app where they're going to be, uh, it says newly formed Wisdom Tree Digital Company intends to issue. Oh, so it, so it hasn't issued their gold and dollar tokens yet, but it intends to. That's what they're saying. Is that happening on the Wisdom Tree Prime app? Because they don't clarify. That... I mean, I don't know how this affects everything. I don't. I don't proclaim to know that, folks. You connect your own dots and do your own research, okay? But Wisdom Tree Prime app runs on Stellar. Wisdom Tree wants to issue gold and dollar tokens at some point in the future. Does that happen on the Wisdom Tree Prime app is my next question. I'll look a little further into this. But then it says the app, which launched in 21 states in July. So it is the Wisdom Tree Prime app. Offers Bitcoin and Ether as well as dollar and gold tokens. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says as well as dollar and gold tokens, but then you just said it intends to issue its gold and dollar tokens. See, they're confusing me. I, I don't know, folks. You got to look deeper into this for yourself until I get a little bit more information because it's, it's either they, it says they intend to issue this, but then it says here it offers this. Which one is it? It says it also allows users to access digital funds that have share uh, ownership records kept on Stellar or Ethereum blockchains that we know also. Right. Um, so now let's scroll down here. Wait a minute. Just a little bit more. Will Peck, Wisdom Tree's head of digital assets, is now also the CEO of Wisdom Tree Digital Trust Company. The charter sets up a roadmap to offer products such as DFS approved stable coins. OK. All right. So they go into it a little bit, just a little bit more intricate. Uh, uh, semantically um all right so now let's move on from there to here that was interesting though i like when i hear something good as well as interesting about stellar or stellar related all right so now we have this article this article is titled chain link cardano and polka dot amongst most developed altcoins yeah these are some heavy hitters here and I'll tell you what, yeah, I, I definitely hold Chainlink. 100% I hold Chainlink, just like I hold Solana. Um, I used to hold Cardano, but um, Cardano was doing a little too good. We had to take some profit off that Cardano, so I don't have any, Car <laughs> I don't have any Cardano anymore. And I never held Polkadot, but I've heard great things about Polkadot, period. Like, I've heard they're very solid, and everything I've read has been very solid on Polkadot. So these are some heavy hitters here. But it says this, according to recent blockchain analytics by Santiment, Chainlink, Cardano and Polkadot lead the pack with the most significant GitHub activity over the past 30 days. Well, didn't Hoskinson tell you they were doing some major things? I guess he wasn't lying. 
It says this metric and an indicator of non-redundant project contributions and enhancements positions these digital assets as key players in the blockchain innovation race. 100 percent. I mean, first of all, that's a no brainer for Chainlink. They're involved in so many big things. They're going to be a major company for a long time, long time. Chainlink, known for its decentralized Oracle network, facilitating smart contracts, has shown remarkable development efforts. Um Analyst Michael Vandepop highlighted Chainlink's recent successful retest of support levels. OK, they go into a little bit of the pricing. I'm not concerned with that. I'm super bullish on Chainlink into the future. Cardano, with his robust proof of stake blockchain, has not only seen a surge in development activities, but also a significant uptick uptick in social engagement. Yes, but I will say this and I'm not I don't know that this is factual, but or this is why it's happening. But once again, I said. Cardano was a money maker in 2021 bull run. Big money maker, big money maker. People don't forget that. And once the bull run kicks up, I had posited that people might come back to the money makers. So yep, yeah, it could be that Solana is just getting very active. I mean, um, Solana Cardano is just getting very active um, with its development, and that's exciting to people. Or they could be coming back because they know that Cardano at any moment could pop off again. There's that. And they have a polka dot section, but I don't have any dot. Never had any polka dot. So I'm not going to cover that. Let's go on here, <laughs> here to a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Bitcoin news. All right. So um, this article is titled Bitcoin. Should you expect an 18 month post halving rally this year? Why 18 months? Oh, I guess they're, I guess they might explain it. It says here, Bitcoin rebounded following a dovish U.S. Fed rate decision, posted a 9.5 percent gain and reclaimed sixty eight thousand dollars on the 20th of March. Wait, wait, let's skip that piece. I want to skip that and get to the part where they talk about the halving. So speaking to Yahoo Finance in an interview dated March 21st, Mark Palmer, senior research analyst of digital assets and managing director of Benchmark, said that the current price action was, quote, not unusual, unquote. He added, quote, what we saw in the two previous halving, which occurred in 2016 and 2021, there were a significant retracement of price ahead of that event. That's right. Yep, he's right. In 2016, it was close to 40. I don't know about 2016, but I know about 2020. It says in 2016, it was close to 40%. In 2020, it was around 20%, which is essentially what we've seen in the 2024 cycle. Palmer cited uncertainty around the halving event as a driver of the retracement. He noted that most miners leave the market during this period. This is on the post halving. Palmer noted that, quote, in 2016, we saw the volatility ahead of the halving. Then the price of Bitcoin went up 17x. In 2020, it was 6x. It says, as such, he noted that Bitcoin always sees an extended rally after the halving that goes on for about, quote, 18 months. Oh, man, don't get me too excited. I want it. I want it bad. And I don't have a whole lot of desires, folks. I wouldn't even call this a desire, but it would be a glorious, glorious time. It says a recent Coinbase institutional note shared a similar observation with clients Regarding the halving event, quote, price action around prior halving supports this view. Bitcoin gained an average of 61 percent in the six months leading up to prior halvings and rose an average of 348 percent in the six months after the halving. Wait a minute. What were the numbers the other individual said? OK, I see. OK, OK, that makes sense. I see. Wow. So, like I said, there's the possibility that this could be the, a bigger bull run than most people expect. And I'm ready for it. I'll tell you that much. I definitely am. So now let's move on here. Oh, this is the Ether another Ethereum article. The only reason I wanted to cover this. Well, let me read this little tidbit and then I'll explain why I wanted to cover this one. It says inquiry, inquiry into $426 billion crypto can nuke U.S. market. Well, it, well, first of all, that says a lot about the so-called centralization, right, that everyone wanted to get away from. Wait a minute. Crypto wanted to get away from centralization. 
But you're saying that Ethereum going down because of the SEC would collapse crypto. Is that not central centralization? Is there something I'm missing here? Right. There's so much hypocrisy in crypto is, is unbelievable, but it shouldn't be that way. If you really believe in decentralization, then don't have everything that's important on one chain. You shouldn't like it's, it's ridiculous. St stick to your word, be decentralized and spread stuff around a little bit. Solana is there. Why didn't I mean, like, I mean, there's so many different good chains that they could build on, but everything on Ethereum. And now you have this problem and they could see this coming from a mile away. But that's not what I wanted to get to. My apologies. I, but sometimes you got to speak truth where when you see something that's that's nonsense here. Um, so. It says the Ethereum Foundation, a Swiss based nonprofit that undergirds the second largest digital asset valued at four hundred and twenty six billion dollar market cap, says it's facing scrutiny from an anonymous. Well, first of all, it says anonymous regulator here, but the original document said an anonymous government. And then it also said as well as the SEC, it was two separate things. But OK, quote. This commit, uh, uh, this commit removes a section of the footer as we have received a voluntary inquiry from a state authority. All right, let's skip that part. It says Fortune has reported that the inquiry is a part of the probe. It's part of a probe from no, they see, and that's where it's getting confusing. We're going to need more clarification on this. The original documents that I read, it was two different entities. One was anonymous. The other one Fortune reported on was SEC, which is not making it a secret. They're not making it a secret. So why would you then say from an anonymous regulator and then say it was the SEC? See how that doesn't make sense? It's like the information is getting confused here. Maybe it's because I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people just want to report on it so quickly because it's hot news that it's not it's not being clear. But we'll we'll get more clarity on that. We'll get more clarity on that. And who who knows? Maybe the first few articles was written incorrectly. We shall see. But either way, that's not what I wanted to get to. There is a part here where they talk about, well, um, if Ethereum goes down, then Bitcoin would be the only one that gets clarity. Here it is. I, f I got it. I've got it. Quote, if the SEC labels Ethereum as a security, that would pretty much nuke the cryptocurrency market in the United States. Unquote. Why? Why? XRP has all the clarity in the world through the courts. Wait a minute. Then he says this, said Aaron Arnold in the video above, quote, because that would mean everything. Now, listen to this. See how these people say this stuff? Because that would mean everything is a security except Bitcoin. Like, I don't did this person not watch the XRP case? Maybe they don't know. I, how do you not know that? It was widely publicized. XRP. No, actually, this is great. It puts XRP in that driver's seat right next to Bitcoin. It has clarity through the courts, period. The lawyers said it. So if anybody wants to debate, they can debate with the lawyers. XRP has clarity through the courts. So it's not just Bitcoin. XRP is right there. So it'll be Bitcoin and, and XRP. But you see how they say that? First of all, it spreads a lot of panic. It's all do filled with doom and gloom and panic. People don't need to be filled with fear. Just make just make clear minded decisions about what you want to do, how you're going to approach this, if it even affects you, because it might not. Um, but and will it would it would it affect a lot of things? Yes. But that's why things shouldn't have been so centralized on Ethereum. They're all all the all on Ethereum, um, a massive amount of stuff, and they should make their chains or whatever they are blockchain agnostic so they can move around like what quant can do. Quant can move anywhere it wants. Is blockchain agnostic. It doesn't have to be on Ethereum. So if they can move, good. If not, what can you do about it? But it doesn't mean everything is a security. No, it doesn't because XRP already won its clarity in court from the Honorable Judge Annalisa Torres. But also they really, really don't want that to be the case. They really, really don't want to say XRP has clarity. XRP is next to Bitcoin because they have a centralist mind state, even though people... A lot of people in crypto will try to sell you this dream of decentralization. We're against decentralization. Well, meanwhile, saying come to this project, only this project is good. Everything else is everything else is a 
is, is, is a crap coin. Everything else is bad. This one right here. But decentralization, guys, we need to make sure things are not centralized. But this coin right here, you need to come right here. Don't go nowhere else. Right here. This is the best right here. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm the only one seeing that, but okay. All right. Putting all your eggs in one basket is never good. Never good. I'm all about diversification. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. So, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.